Welcome back everybody, it's OG here. Today you're watching the Bell X-1, my newest recreation of historic aircraft attempt. I love the Bell X-1, this is where it really all started. This is where supersonic flight began, literally. On the 14th of October 1947, the Bell X-1 was flown supersonic by the great Chuck Yeager for the first time. Chuck got to a speed of about Mach 1.06, creating the first sonic boom from an aircraft. The X-1 is a rocket-powered aircraft, and I've tried to recreate it as faithfully as possible. You can see the four rocket nozzles at the back, though they are all linked to the same engine. Chuck set the record at about 45,000 feet and you'll see in this video that my first run I did not make it supersonic because I was flying too low. Uh, 45,000 feet is about 13,700 meters. There are not many people on earth whom I look up to. Not many people I think are euro worthy. I certainly do not praise celebrities. That being said, there are a few greats whom I really admire, and Chuck Yeager is one of them. Chuck was a fighter pilot in World War II. He took his first kill over France in 1943 and was shot down the following day. He then proceeded to escape with the help of the French resistance, making it to Spain and then home. There was a thing in World War II where if you were shot down over enemy territory you were not allowed to fly a combat mission there again. Because if you were then shot down again and you were captured by the Germans they could interrogate you and find out about the French resistance and you could compromise the entire French underground. Jaeger had been shot down but Jaeger was not willing to stay down. He wanted to fly again. He fought and he fought and he fought and he made such a noise that he ended up with his request in front of Eisenhower himself. Eisenhower said something along, along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing here, everyone else is trying to get home, you trying to get back towards the front lines, what's wrong with you? To which Jaeger replied something along the lines of, I haven't finished my duty yet. It's probably also worth noting that Jaeger taught the French resistance to make bombs, a skill which he had apparently learned from his father. Jaeger was a fantastic soldier and an even better pilot. He went on to take several kills in World War II and depending on your source it looks like it's anything between 11.5 and 13. I would believe the 13 since that's what Jaeger said. He attained the title of ace. For those who don't know, an ace is someone who gets five kills. Um, that goes without saying if you got to 13, but not only that, he also got the ace in a day, which is where you kill five aircraft in one day. He managed to shoot down an ME-262, one of the German jet-powered aircraft. Using his propeller-powered aircraft, he flew a P-51 Mustang. Jaeger named his aircraft after his girlfriend and later his wife, Glenis. Many of his aircraft were named Glamorous Glen or Glamorous Glenis or something along those lines. This X-1 was Glamorous Glenis. When looking for a pilot to fly the X-1 through the sound barrier, the guys at Bell who built it and the Air Force approached Slick Goodwin who demanded $150,000 to do it. That's about two million dollars in today's money. That was a lot of money for them and they turned him down and then approached Jaeger who did it for nothing more than his regular Air Force salary. The day before breaking the sound barrier, Chuck Jaeger and his wife went horse riding and they raced. Jaeger's horse came to an abrupt stop at a gate or a fence or something, throwing him off and he broke two ribs. He didn't tell anyone because then they wouldn't let him fly the plane the next day. What he did was he went off to the local vet who bandaged him up. Then he, with the help of one of his friends, got hold of a little broom handle 
which he used to lever the door of the X-1 closed prior to flying it because he didn't have enough leverage or enough power in his own arm due to the broken ribs. The X-1 was not the only supersonic speed record setting plane which Jaeger flew. He went on to fly the X-1A which is not as similar to the X-1 as what it may sound even if it used the same engine. He did twice the speed of sound in that one. At one stage the United States Navy held the speed record of Mach 2 and they were planning a celebration, a big parade and so forth to celebrate this achievement of theirs. I think it was Scott Crossfield who set the record, I'm not sure about that. Jaeger saw this coming up, he decided to rain on their parade by breaking their record. I think he then went to Mach 2.44 before they had a chance to hold their We Have the Fastest Man Alive parade. An incredibly brave man, Jaeger was not daunted by the prospect of not coming home from a mission. Back in those days, they didn't really know too much about aerodynamics. The horizontal stabilizers of the X-1 are a testimony to that. If you look at them, they are designed very differently to the horizontal stabilizers of modern supersonic planes. I'm not going to go into that in detail, you can read up on that on your, on your own, but just take my word for it. The very shape of the X-1 was based on a 50 caliber bullet, because they knew that that shape was stable at supersonic speeds. That's the kind of knowledge that they were working with when they built this thing. Try as I might, I could not get my X-1 to fly into the air. I'm okay with this, because the real X-1 was dropped by a B-29 bomber though Chuck Yeager did actually manage to get X-1s to take off from the ground as well. But the record flights were done from a B-29. Flying the X-1A, Yeager got into a lot of trouble. It suffered from high speed inertia coupling and he had to bail out after getting into a spin and he was lucky to survive that one. Later on in an F-104 he was again setting speed records or altitude records or both and that tried to kill him too and he had to eject at fairly low altitude and he got set alight by I think it was the pyrotechnic charges or rockets under his ejector seat and he had a fire in his helmet he almost lost an eye he had severe burns and needed skin grafts thereafter Chuck Yeager also went on to fly in the Vietnam War after eventually retiring from the Air Force with the rank of Brigadier General Jaeger went on to consult for the Air Force. He earned a princely sum of one dollar a year. That's just the kind of guy he was. He wasn't in it for the money. He also trained many of the astronauts in the Mercury, Gemini and Apollo programs. So as someone who did not have a degree, he wasn't allowed to be an astronaut himself. Which just shows how stupid the entire idea of degrees is. But that's a topic for another day. If you are interested in the history of Chuck Yeager and early supersonic flight and the Mercury program, try to get hold of a copy of the movie The Right Stuff. It's a, an old movie, 1983, but it's very good and it's aged well because it's a historical type movie, so it's not like things change. And you'll see a lot of Yeager in that. It gives a lot more background to his story and to the X-1 story and then the entire Mercury program, which is also great to watch. 50 years after breaking the sound barrier for the first time, so in 1997, Chuck Yeager went on to break the sound barrier again at the age of 89, flying in an F-15. Obviously he was not the only occupant of the F-15, but if I know Yeager, and I don't, but I'm guessing, I'm sure he was at the controls at least a little bit during that flight. To get this X-1 of mine into the air, I had to teleport it. If you want to know how to do that, then watch my How to Teleport Things in KSB2 video. I take my hat off to these early pioneers of flight, especially in this day and age when everyone is overly safety conscious and too politically to correct and don't have much in the way of sense of duty or patriotism for various reasons. And I take my hat off to those early pioneers whether they are in the US, like Jaeger, or the old Soviets, or whoever else, we should never let the political forces of the world divide us from one another. 
we are all human beings we are all pretty much the same we all want pretty much the same things and at times like this when the west and east are so divided I implore you not to listen to the words of politicians and indeed not to support them any of them they are all equally equally dirty they all just care about money just remember that we have great people all around the world good people all around the world we've only got one planet and we're all in this together thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed seeing my little x1 flying around and hearing a little bit of info about the great Chuck Yeager. OG out. <laughs>